Hi, my name is Jamie Thompson and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrates the capabilities of Cozy Rock Software's suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. The demonstrations herein were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2008, however the Cozy Rock tasks and components are available for both SQL Server Integration Services 2005 and 2008 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about Cozy Rock's Script Component Plus. It's a component that Cozy Rock provides that extends the out-of-the-box functionality of the SSIS script component. Today, with the SSIS script component, component you cannot take those components and share them in different places, either in different data flows or even in different packages. What Cozy Rock Script Component Plus allows you to do is exactly that. You can take a single script component and share the code from that in different places and you only actually have to write it once and that's a lot better solution than copying and pasting script components from one place to another which is essentially all you can do today with the out of the box script component. So before I actually demonstrate it we as always have to add it to our toolbox. Let's go and do that. We choose items. We go to SSIS data flow items and scroll down to script component plus right there. Select it, OK, and that's appeared in our toolbox for us. The example I'm going to use in this video is I'm going to use um, .NET regular expressions to test whether some data validates against a particular format or not. And what I'm going to do is, is use a script component to implement that regular expression. So, to go into a little bit more detail, what I'm actually going to do is produce some data which are um, a set of uh, strings that look like United Kingdom postcodes. I can show you that now. So I have an LADB source component click preview. So I've got five rows that I'm going to test. Now each one of those looks very much like a UK postcode uh, but in actual fact there are certain rules about what can and cannot be in a UK postcode and uh, we're going to use regular expressions to test whether each one of those is valid or not. So I hit close, I cancel out. So as I say we're going to use a script component to do that but in this case we're going to use a script component plus. So let me drag on the script component plus. You'll see this looks very familiar to a regular script component. Um, you, this, is, this is the screen you normally get when you drag on a script component. In this case I'm going to choose it to be a transformation. I'm going to hook up our output from the OIDB source component. Just to verify again we have one column in there, it's called postcode. Let's go into our script component. Our screen you see at the moment is the setup screen. We don't actually need that for this example, so I'm going to go over to Advanced. And anyone who's familiar with the script component will recognize this straight away. The input columns, inputs and outputs, script and connection managers. In the center of the screen, we're able to select our postcode column. This is the column that we're actually going to carry out some processing upon within our script component. I'm going to go over to Inputs and Outputs now. Now, I have an output from my script component already. Let's make this a little larger. The value here means that uh, our output is synchronous to our input, which is what we want. Now we also want, actually what I'll do with that is call that match. Because what I'm going to do is have two outputs, and I'm going to send each postcode to one of these two outputs, depending on whether it's valid or not. So the valid postcodes will go to our match output, and I'm going to add another, which I'll call no match. This needs to be synchronous to our input as well. And because we're going to send uh, each of our incoming rows to one or the other of these 
outputs I need to make sure that the exclusion group is set as well now all I need to do is set the exclusion group to a no, uh, non-zero value for, and it's got to be the same for both outputs so I'll set it to 1 for the no match output I'll go over to match I'll set that to 1 as well okay so we've um, set up all the inputs and outputs that we need for our script component I'm going to go into script this is the script editor that we get this is all standard SSIS at this stage I'm going to need an extra using statement if I'm going to use regular expressions that's what we need system.text.regular expressions now I have cheated a bit because over in my um, text editor here I have the code that I need for the um, input zero process input row method what this is basically doing is going to check each incoming postcode against a regular expression pattern which is defined here and depending on whether our incoming row matches that pattern or not we're going to direct that row either to our match output or to our no match output okay now this is all again very standard SSIS stuff I'm going to build that we got build succeeded which is good news if I come out our script component will validate that's good news and now all I need to do now is hook those two outputs out to my two union all components which I'm using to terminate the data paths so in this case I'll pick the match output to go to my match union all component and my no match output will go to my no match union all component like that if I execute this remember that we've got five incoming rows and it's worked and those five rows three of them have gone to our match output two of them have gone to our no match output doesn't matter which rows went where that's not really the point of the video but just understand that we have a working script component that uses regular expressions and because it's a script component plus we can actually use that in different data flows now you may have noticed at the start that we do have another data flow in here up to now we've been working with our DFT filter postcodes in DFT filter postcodes 2 you'll see we have exactly the same components that we started with before but we don't have the script component plus that's because what we're going to do is reuse the code that we've already written in the first data flow so I'm going to hop over to that first data flow open up the script component again and you'll see in the bottom left corner here we have two buttons one is labeled export script one is labeled link to script we're going to use the export script button and there's one I used earlier I'm going to uh, oh, delete that one okay so what we're doing is taking the definition of our script components which includes the definition of all the columns and the actual script itself and we're outputting it to a SCX file I'm going to call it postcode regex let's save that do you want to replace it yes that's fine so what we've done is exported the script from this script component we've already written okay I'm going to hop over to our second data flow I'm going to drag on a script component plus again it's going to be a transformation we'll hook up our input now let's go in here now in this case rather than heading straight to the advanced tab to start defining all our code and our inputs and outputs what we're going to do is use the link to script button going to select the SCX file that I just outputted so what has happened now is our script component plus has read the definition of the script component from the SCX file if I hop over to advanced you'll see that we now have our match and our no match outputs defined within this script component which is exactly what we want so without writing any more code or without doing any copy paste or anything like that we've copied the def definition from one script component into another if we head to the script tab you'll see I'm not actually able 
to go and edit the script here which is exactly what we want we don't want to be going and editing the script in two places we can only edit in one place thus ensuring that both of these scripts are going to remain consist consistent with each other and this is a much better way of sharing code than simply copying and pasting code and script components themselves from one place to another okay so I'm going to hit close now one extra thing we do have to do is hook up our input again that's just a side effect of using the script component plus if I go to advanced select postcode and we should be ready to go I can hook this up to our outputs and we're ready to go I'm going to execute this and there we go we get the same result okay so let's review what we've done we built a script component in one data flow and then in another data flow we used the exact same definition of the script component without actually having to copy code from one place to another that's a real benefit it's something that you don't get with SQL Server integration services out of the box and it's what Cozy Rock offer with their script component plus I hope this has been useful, I hope it's been interesting, and I hope you find some value in the script component plus in the future. Thank you for watching.